Hello everyone and welcome to Retail Archaeology. Today we'll be taking a look at the 99 cents only stores. The uh, 99 cents only stores were founded in 1969 in California and they currently have a little under 400 stores in California, Arizona, Texas, and Nevada. Now before I decided to do this video, I hadn't really been in one of these stores before. I've been in like Dollar Trees and stuff like that, but I found this is kind of a completely different animal from that. Starting with like the little coin operated rides here, this is something very reminiscent of like old school grocery store to me. And that's kind of a theme that carries out throughout these stores. Something else I was interested to see here at this location was a payphone. You really don't see these that often anymore. It's pretty banged up. But it's only 25 cents, or if that's what it says, unfortunately it doesn't work. But uh, let's take a look at the inside of the store. So immediately, it feels like a really kind of old school grocery store here, including the coloring, the layout, the blue stripe tile floor. And there's a lot of grocery items in here. It's not just a lot of the stuff you would find at Dollar Tree or other 99 cent stores. Something else that's important to mention is even though the name of the store is 99 cents only, not everything in here is only 99 cents. Stuff, you know, ranges up to a few dollars, but it's all still, you know, very much at bargain prices. Before we get too much further into the history of the 99 cents only store, I want to give a shout out to uh, Dan Mason for letting me use music from his album Electric Elevator. That's what you're listening to right now. And I've been finding myself listening to this one a lot as well. So if you enjoy it, definitely check out his uh, website down in the description below. Moving on to the 99 cents only store themselves, I was surprised to find a produce section in here and it's, it's not huge, but it's not small either. And the produce wasn't awful looking, that was, I was also surprised by that. Got a little salad section over here and some bread. Something I did notice was, is there was a few shoppers in here, but it didn't seem very busy. The last time I had been in this kind of store, like a 99 cent only store, it may have been 10 years at this point, but it was super busy. Just not so much. I can't remember the last time I saw ceiling fans in, in like a grocery store, which again, that's what this feels like to me as an old grocery store when you look at that color scheme. And also the Shasta. This is something else I remember from grocery stores when I was a kid. I was surprised to see this here. I haven't seen Shasta in forever. But now I know where to get it. Now you may be asking yourselves, why are we talking about the 99 cents only store on retail archaeology? Well, in 2012, the 99 cents only store was purchased via a leveraged buyout, starting to see a common theme here, and one of the parties involved with that was Ares Investments, it's A-R-E-S, I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but they were also involved with the Neko buyout that we talked about previously on Retail Archaeology, and leveraged buyouts in general have kind of been a subject on this channel because those seem to have really hurt huge retailers like 99 cents only store and Toys R Us. It's really easy to blame a lot of uh, retail demise on Amazon, but honestly, these leveraged buyouts are doing just as much, if not more damage than Amazon is doing to these retailers. You guys wanna do some gardening from the 99 cents only store? <laughs> I was actually kind of tempted to buy some of these and try it out. We do a little bit of growing stuff around the house, so who knows? It might work. Now, this is something kind of interesting that caught my eye. This is a Star Wars toy on sale for a value price of $9.99. And I kind of remember this thing being pricey when it came out. And I was interested to see this here, so when I started doing research for this, I found that um, not only does 99 cents only stores own these stores, they also operate a business called Bargain Wholesale, which uh, sells discount wholesale stuff to retailers all over the United States, so that's probably how they get access to some of this stuff. And that would probably also help to explain the really large amount of debt that was created for this leverage buyout to buy this company, because the 394 stores that doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, it's a lot of stores, but it's not a huge amount. 
And currently they have $800 million in outstanding debt that's coming in 2019, and that's a lot for 394 stores, plus a wholesale business. That still seems like a lot. So that is why we're talking about the 99 cents only store on retail archaeology is because once again, we've got a situation with a leverage buyout and a huge amount of debt coming up soon and a company scrambling trying to restructure it. Another little interesting tidbit that kind of speaks to the possible health of this company is that they've had five different CEOs and CFOs since the leveraged buyout. Now, on the flip side, the good news is their sales have been up slightly recently, which is good. So maybe that will help them restructure that $800 million in debt they have coming up in a few years. But once again, I wanted to make sure and document this as another example of leveraged buyouts just really screwing the pooch, basically. And I'm also glad that I, I visited these stores too because I was not aware of the huge variety of things they sold. I mean, you really could do, I mean, you really could do your grocery shopping here if, if, you, if you wanted to. And I imagine a lot of people do. I know that food deserts are a thing that actually do exist where there's not a lot of options for lower income people to get groceries. And I know that stores like this do service those areas are and are important so it's again a shame that something like this could go away because it really could hurt the community and make those food deserts even worse now we're going to take a look at a second store in the evening and take a closer look at some of the products they sell but first this message Shut up, lady. You're not shopping at the 99 cents only store. Anyways, this is the second location I wanted to take a look at in the evening. And honestly, that commercial is insulting. I That's one of the dumbest commercials I've ever seen. But anyways, in this location, I wanted to take a closer look at some of the products that they sell in the 99 cents only store. Uh, for example, here's the toy section, which we didn't really see in the first store. And I kind of expected to find a lot of like generic and knockoff stuff here, but it's actually a lot of name brand stuff. It's just close out and outdated stuff. Uh, for example, Lego Dimensions was something that was just recently canceled, but here's a bunch of their toys. Really cheap, but it's only one Powerpuff Girl character and uh, Starfire from Teen Titans Go. Just those two characters, so that's interesting. And then we got some like Doc McStuff and stuff. A lot of name brand toys here, just old. You've got some of your like grocery store, you know, classics too, like junky squirt guns and jump ropes and stuff like that. But there's, you know, older Hot Wheels here. Something from a, a Pixar film there. You got some Yokai Watch stuff there. Actually, not a bad selection, really. Goofiest slogans on the walls. Do you guys remember having like cheap gumball machines like this when you were kids? My daughter saw this and really wanted it, and that that's cheap as hell. Why not? I mean, it'll probably break after a week, but whatever. And again with the ceiling fans, but it just you know the fonts, the color of the lettering, that's all just so old, like '80s grocery store to me. Now this is like a, a husked coconut, which normally I think you would pay more for this at a grocery store, so I was kind of surprised to see that. Here's a closer look at the seasonal decor, and they had some like gardening stuff, you got your tiki torches there, just, you know, like I said, a wide variety of things. Got a jar of dream here, only 99 cents. Anybody want a jar of dream? <laughs> and hula girls! Love that tacky crap. I 
I will say too, their stores are very brightly lit. That's that's good. And here we've got uh, cheap wine, and cheap bread, some cup noodles there. Somehow I doubt it's fresh baked bread. But for some reason, I, I really liked that blinking fresh baked sign. I don't know why. I just love weird crap like that. And here we've got some Christmas crunch in April. And some other Captain Crunch stuff. And these boxes were like a weird size. I've never seen this size before. I've never seen Touchdown Crunch before either. And here's some uh, brands of cookies I've never heard of either. And uh, at that price, I feel like that name might be a little misleading. And of course, we got to take a look at the uh, candy section. Woohoo! <laughs> got lots of candies from Mexico here, which I love seeing this stuff. And uh, these Sunny D candies are actually really good. If you ever see those anywhere, I've never seen them anywhere but here, but grab them. Now how about some Kipper snacks? I'm not even sure what that is. This was something else that cracked me up. There was a very large selection of canned and tinned fish and mussels and scallops and all kinds of not appetizing looking things. You see what I mean there? There's a lot there. Gross. <laughs> Some canned chicken bologna. Like really, this is half an aisle of, of canned stuff like this. And here's something I've never heard of. Prem. Looks like it's a spam type product. When spam's not generic enough, there's Prem. <laughs> I, I doubt it's ever been featured on The Price is Right. We're starting to get towards the end of our look at the 99 cents only store, so let me know what your thoughts are on the store down in the comments below. And uh, here's our haul. This is actually all the stuff we bought while we were here, including those sunglasses. Also, let me know what your thoughts are on leverage buyouts down in the comments below, because it seems to me because of things like that, we might not be able to walk out of stores like this anymore. As always, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retailarchaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey, thanks again for checking out my video on the 99 cents only stores. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and also check out Dan Mason's album Electric Elevator if you enjoyed the music in this video. And also make sure to follow at these social media links down below because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel. And as always, thanks for watching.